Hi guys, this is James from Invector Gaming and today I've got some news regarding the PlayStation 5 launch. Now, PlayStation have been quite quiet recently. In fact, they've been very quiet. Uh, Xbox have revealed most of their stats and key things about the Xbox Series X, which is coming out hopefully holiday season this year, if an unnamed disease doesn't get to us all by that point. Uh, but PlayStation haven't really said anything. They've been uh, extremely quiet on the specs, on the price. And now finally, Mark Cerny, who is one of the head boffins at PlayStation, uh, has given a live stream in front of an audience of what looked like about four people telling us a little bit of information about what to expect from the PlayStation 5. Now, <laughs> it was a very technically involved speech. A lot of it went over my head. However, I've tried to compile some of the most interesting points and the highlights as I see them. Now, Mark started off by talking a lot about dreams, not the PlayStation game, but what his dreams and his company's dreams were for the PlayStation 5. Uh, and it seems to me that they want it to be a generational leap. What this means is it's not just going to be iterative on the PlayStation 4. It's not going to be a little bit faster or a little bit better graphics. They want it to be a lot faster, a lot better graphics. If something took 20, 30 seconds to load on your PlayStation 4, they want it like that. They want it instantly, instantaneous loading. They want bigger worlds that stream in instantly from your PlayStation hardware. One of the things that he said right at the start was that games are at the core of their philosophy, which as a PlayStation, I mean, that's what you'd expect, right? <laughs> now, I think this was probably a bit of a jab at Microsoft, who, as we all know, when they launched the Xbox One, uh, it was a little bit of a disaster. They seemed to focus on nearly everything apart from the games. It was, it could play Netflix, it could stream, it could, uh, it could wash your dishes for you, it could play the piano and the harmonica at the same time. But the games <laughs> sort of took a little bit of a backseat. So I think PlayStation are continuing their strategy with what they've done with PlayStation 4 and they're putting the games forefront and center of their strategy going forward. One of the things Mark talked about was he wanted the adjustment period for developers moving from PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5 to be quite fast. Uh, he didn't want them spending three or four months learning a whole load of new software and hardware that's very unfamiliar to them. So he said that the adjustment period would be about one month, okay, four weeks. That seems quite fast to me. So it seems like the developer kits must be quite intuitive um, and quite easy to pick up. So that's always good. He said the most requested feature for the PlayStation 5 was an SSD. That's a solid state drive. It's going to be 825 gigabytes in size. Uh, and what this is going to allow them to do is deliver on that speed that they talked about. It makes things incredibly fast. So he used the example of Spider-Man. Uh, if you wanted to fast travel in that game, you get on the subway or the underground if you're British like I am. You get on the underground and then you'd whiz off to your destination. I mean, I say whiz, it would actually take about 30, 20 to 30 seconds to get there. And this was the game trying to load in all the assets essentially. With the new PlayStation 5, that's gonna be instantaneous. In fact, he says it's gonna be 100 times faster than the PlayStation 4. It's gonna load about five gigabytes in a second, which is pretty impressive. That really is a generational leap. The SSD is also going to enable things like hardware accelerated ray tracing, which is essentially a fancy term for state of the art cutting edge lighting technology. The systems that we're using at the moment actually simulate light in a fairly primitive way uh, when compared to ray tracing. But this allows for almost uh, photorealistic imaging. The long and short of that is that all of our games are going to look beautiful. They're going to be lit beautifully and they're going to be very fast in terms of loading and how fast they can stream that information from the game. Okay, another thing that Mark touches on is backwards compatibility. So we were all hoping for full backwards compatibility going right the way back to PlayStation 1. Now it doesn't look like we're getting that, which is a massive shame seen as Xbox have really uh, been crushing it on this front since the very beginning of the console wars. Xbox has always covered backwards compatibility with their consoles. However, he did say that only PlayStation 4 will be backwards compatible with PlayStation 5, which is obviously a bit of a letdown. And he even said that not even all <laughs> PlayStation 4 games would be backwards compatible with PlayStation 5. Most would be at launch, but they'd have to take it on a case by case basis. Now, the last thing that he talked about is something that I found particularly interesting, and this is the developments with 3D audio for the PlayStation 5. Now, audio hasn't really advanced that much in terms of gaming. It sort of hit its stride with PlayStation 3. We thought, yeah, this is pretty good. We can kind of tell roughly whereabouts in the room something's coming from. It's sort of to your left. It's sort of to your right. But that was about it. 
With PlayStation 5, however, he says that all sound is going to be in 3D. With the PlayStation 4, you can have about 20 3D sounds and the rest will just have to be plain stereo. Not so with the PlayStation 5. He used the example of rain. So rather than just have one audio recording of 3D rain, you would be able to have multiple, hundreds in fact, of the rain hitting all the different objects in the scene. So rain on the roof above you, that's one sound. Rain on the roof to your right hitting that bit of the roof, that's a different sound. Maybe rain out outside on the patio, that's all its own sound. It could even be multiple sounds. PlayStation have essentially built from the ground up a new bit of proprietary tech that means they built it especially for the PlayStation 5 called the Tempest 3D Audio Tech. Now, one of the other benefits to this new 3D sound driver is the ability to virtually make 3D sound available for TV speakers or just left and right speakers. Now, as we all know right now, in order to experience 3D binaural audio, you need headphones, right? You need isolation for your left and right ear to be able to hear the sounds individually. PlayStation has said that with this, you'll be able to sit on the couch and hear sounds behind you, to the right of you, to the left of you, how far to the right of you a sound is. This is particularly impressive, right? We really don't have anything like this right now. Now, just quickly, one of the last things he said about the audio that I find particularly interesting, the way that we hear sound and the way that we place sound in an environment is all based on the unique makeup of our ear. Now, in order for the PlayStation 5 to be able to truly make the best 3D sound for your ear, Mark said that in the future, and this is nuts, in the future, you may be able to take a picture of your ear or take a video of your ear and send that to PlayStation. They will then process that and adapt the 3D audio in your game to suit your exact ear, giving you the best possible 3D sound, the best possible sound experience. Now, there are a few things that were left out. One was the possible delays that we've all heard about given the Peroni pandemic, which I'm not allowed to say. Uh, this could mean that the PlayStation 5 might be pushed back into 2021. Currently, they're aiming for a 2020 holiday release. However, as we all know, manufacturing is kind of on lockdown right now. In fact, most of the world is on lockdown right now. So that really could push the PlayStation and the Xbox back into next year. He didn't touch on that. Another thing he didn't touch on was the price. We don't know how much this is going to cost. Estimates are currently at about the five to six hundred pound mark. There's a lot of details that we don't know, but they're the details that we have right now. Hopefully you found some of this waffle informative. If you did, please give the video a like. You can follow us on Twitter at InvictorMagG. You can follow me on Twitter at Genton. That's D-J-E-N-T-O-N. That's all for now. Until next time, guys. Peace out. There's a whole subset of level design dedicated to this sort of work.